Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Please remember to like and subscribe. Today we will be looking at evaluating limits involving the method of factorization. And on the screen we have four questions. So what you can do is that you can pause the video, you can go ahead, attempt the questions and come back. And these are of course past paper type questions. So you can pause the video and work them and then come back and look at the solutions. We're going to start with question A. So let me just scroll down here. So I can get some space. For question A, I could attempt to use direct substitution. That is normally the first approach. So if I attempt to use direct substitution here, I'm going to have, replacing my x with 0, I'm going to have 0 squared, 0 over 0, which is going to give me 0 over 0. And of course, this is indeterminate. We are therefore going to have to look at using a different method. Now, if we look at this expression, we notice that this is something that can be factorized. So we could attempt that approach. So I'm going to have the limit as x tends towards 0. Notice x is common in the numerator there, so I could take out an x. So I'm going to have x plus 1 all over x. So we could reduce this expression by saying that x into x goes one time, x into x goes one time. So we end up with the limit as x tends towards 0 of x plus 1. We can now replace our x by 0, which is going to give me 0 plus 1, which is equal to 1. So therefore, the limit as x tends towards 0 of x squared plus x all over x is equal to 1. All right, here we go with question B. Now, to determine if question B can work by direct substitution, what we can do is to take the value of minus 2 and put it in the denominator. So when I put a minus 2 down there, I'm going to get 0, which means I'm going to have an indeterminate response once more. We don't have to substitute it for all the x's. It is the denominator that will be critical. Right? So I'm going to have to take a different approach. Now, when I examine the numerator here, I have x cubed plus 8 which means I actually have the sum of two cubes here because 8 can be written as 2 cube. So let us recall what the sum of two cubes look like. So we have x cubed plus y cubed. This is equivalent to x plus y into x squared minus xy plus y squared. Right? So we have to know this before we can attempt to evaluate this question. Let us now rewrite the numerator. So I'm going to have the limit as x tends to my minus 2 of x cubed plus 2 cubed all over x plus 2. So by comparison, we can think of x as x and y as 2. And we're going to replace the identity with x and 2 respectively. So I'm going to have the limit as x tends towards minus 2 of x plus 2 into x squared minus 2 x plus 2 squared which of course we could just write as 4 all over x plus 2 now clearly we see where we can reduce here so my x plus 2 would take this out right here this is going to leave me with the limit as x tends towards minus 2 of x squared minus 2x plus 4 and now we can just make our direct substitution so this is going to become negative 2 squared minus 2 times negative 2 plus 4. And we put all this inside of our calculators, we end up with 12. So our concluding statement is therefore the limit, or we can say the limit of x cubed plus 8 over x plus 2 as x tends towards minus 2 is actually equal to 12. Question C is asking us to find the limit of x squared minus 4 over x minus 2 as x tends towards 2. Now we have to be able to identify the difference of two squares here. So for you to effectively work limits, you have to be able to manipulate things algebraically. So the difference of two squares, a perfect cube, and so on. We have to know this. So bear in mind now that we can write x squared minus 4 as x squared minus 2 squared. So I'm going to have the limit as x tends towards 2 of 
x squared minus 2 squared all over x minus 2. And we know the difference of 2 squares is going to become the limit as x tends towards 2 of x minus 2 into x plus 2 all over x minus 2. Now we can go right ahead and reduce. So I'm going to have this taking out this. So we end up with a limit of x plus 2 as x tends towards 2. This is going to become, so we can do the substitution now. So we have 2 plus 2, which becomes 4. So therefore, the limit of x squared minus 4 over x minus 2 as x tends towards 2 is equal to 4. For question D, we have the limit of x cubed minus 125 all over x minus 5 as x tends towards 5. If you look at the numerator again, we can see there that we have the difference of two cubes. So we can go ahead and recall our problem. So recall that x cubed minus y cubed is equivalent to x minus y into x squared plus xy plus y squared. So we could start by rewriting the numerator. So I'm going to have the limit of x cubed minus 5 cubed all over x minus 5 as x tends towards 5. Now, applying the identity here, factorizing my numerator, I'm going to end up with the limit of x minus 5 into x squared plus 5x plus 5 squared all over x minus 5 as x tends towards 5. Once again, we can go ahead and reduce here. So the x minus 5, we take out x minus 5. So we end up with the limit of x squared plus 5x. And 5 squared would be 25 as x tends towards 5. Now we can actually make our direct substitution here. So I'm going to have 5 squared plus 5 times 5 plus 25 which is going to break down to give me 125. So therefore, the limit of x cubed minus 125 all over x minus 5 as x tends towards 5 is equal to 125.